Hey there, folks. Happy Saturday to you. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Uh, I, I had plans to do a market wrap video after the close yesterday, and, or last night, actually, and uh, stocks to watch, live ticker TV session uh, today. Unfortunately, life doesn't always go as planned. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a, uh, a fairly... Decent event here, uh, flooded three rooms of my home, and wound up having ServPro out here uh, late into the night, and uh, my house is an absolute total disaster right now, and we've got uh, Mother's Day coming up tomorrow, tomorrow morning, so the odds of a uh, live Stocks to Watch event happening this weekend are pretty slim. Uh, sorry about that, but um, I may try to get a stocks to watch, you know, pre-recorded video out before the weekend or before the weekend's over. But I, I wouldn't count on that happening. I just have way too much going on. But anyway, uh, I did want to get a market wrap uh, video out because I think we're going to have a pretty, uh, I think next week could be pretty critical week. And um so let's just let me just start out. So, so you know, last week I came into the market. You you you, you know that if you watched me last week, you know that I uh, sold some long-term uh, portfolio positions. I raised some cash. Um, I, I reduced exposure. I sold some swings and raised cash, reduced ex some exposure there, and looked. To uh, I took some feelers with some short or bearish type uh, ETFs uh, in DRIP and SPXS and TIVX uh, for volatility, and that actually started working out uh, fairly well. I did uh, reduce. I actually scaled on some SPXS and I scaled on some uh, DRIP. Uh, did hold, continue to hold the position. Uh, Friday, we had a little bounce in the markets after that really positive uh, jobs report. And I am being 100% sarcastic when I say that. Uh, the jobs report was not positive. I know that the that the market looked at it that way. Um, <laughs> but when you really take a step back and look at uh, what's going on in the economy and what's going on in the markets... I, so you have to weigh things out, right? You say, okay, what's in favor of the bulls and what's in favor of the bears? So in favor of the bulls, we've got the fact that this is probably one of the most hated rallies ever because so many people have missed it. There's a tremendous short position. I think the largest short position in S&P 500 since 2008. That's a good thing for the bulls, right? Because, uh, they're, because the sentiment is so negative that it's creating some squeezes as the market continues to move higher. So uh, the fact that the employment report was had missed, was came in light, was a good thing, right? Because, and I find this so hilarious, the way that things get spun. Some analysts said, you know, the reason that this is such a good thing is that means we're, we're at full employment. And we could see continuing numbers in the 100 to you know, or below 200,000 range. And that actually is a very good sign, which I think is a total crock of you know what. That is not a good sign. There are two things that are extremely important for the economy and the markets. One, earnings. Earnings matter. And you know what? We have been in an earnings recession, quote unquote, for the last three quarters. Earnings this quarter have been disappointing. Guidance is not great. Uh, the GDP economy is not growing at a fast pace. I've been saying for the last several quarters that it, what's been concerning to me is the amount of companies that are reducing their workforce and cutting CapEx spending. So uh, there are a significant amount of companies that have been laying off. So let's just take some recent examples. You know, Intel announcing that they're laying off 12,000 employees. Uh, 
we know what's been going on in the oil and gas industry. You know, I had a friend that moved to North Dakota or South Dakota, whatever, where he was a welder. And when he went in the in the heyday of the oil boom, he was guaranteed to make seventy five grand a year as a welder in the oil industry. We see what's happening in that industry. Just watch the special on, or not a special, but watch the little segment on CNBC. A lot of the people that were working in that oil industry making those big numbers, those 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 good high paying jobs, are looking for boat, you know, looking for jobs on shrimp boats that have two employees, okay? So to, to suggest that we are at full employment, is maybe that's true. The question is, what are the quality of those jobs that people are getting? So uh, I think the spin on the jobs number was is ridiculous, but the other things that the bulls are latching on to is the fact that the Fed will not be able to get back to a normalized interest rate policy, right? They're, because of that weak jobs number, they're suggesting that they're not going to be able to raise rates in June. And that may be true, okay? But I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing for our economy or the market. Uh, it, what was funny about it is before the jobs number came out, we had a Fed member that came out and said, He's thinking two or three interest rate hikes before the end of the year. Then after we got the jobs number, you had another Fed member come out and suggest that we're going to get two rate hikes before the end of the year. The Fed is in a very bad position. They have a quarter point to mess with if we actually roll over and go into a recession before they have to start printing money again. But that's a whole other story. Bottom line is, I don't think the jobs number was a positive thing. You know, it takes a while for these uh, job layoffs to work themselves through the system. They're good, high-paying, quality jobs that are being lost. Uh, you know, Intel doesn't go out tomorrow and, and, and lay off 12,000 people. They do it in waves, right? And those people, they get laid off. They don't go out and file unemployment right away. They go out and they, you know, tweak their resume, take a little time to themselves, and then they go out and hit the job market, try to find a job, and when they can't find a job, that's when they file unemployment. So these things take time to work through the system, and it's not we're not looking at a very favorable trend, okay? Uh, so I don't want to be overly negative, overly pessimistic, but we've had a tremendous run in a very short period of time, Technically, we're coming up into, we came up into some areas of resistance. They acted as resistance. We, we're pulling back. Earnings have not been great. And we've got some more earnings coming out next week that could really impact the markets in the near-term direction. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what's going on. So we got the S&P 500, you know, 2040. This area is a big spot. If we break below 2040, uh, it looks as though we're probably going to go down and test 2,000. Nice round number, right? If we break below 2,000, then the next area of potential support is somewhere around 1960 or so. If we break those key areas of support, you're going to see fear come into the marketplace, and you're going to see some of these bearish ETFs. Uh, make some nice moves to the upside. What was interesting about the fact that the market liked what they heard uh, from the jobs report and how, how they interpreted it was interesting. The other interesting that ha thing that happened was the strength of the dollar. So now, the, the weakness in the dollar is has been, you know, a big reason why we had such a tremendous move in the markets. As the dollar continues to weaken, the markets are moving higher. Uh, we had that nice rally. You've got you know metals and miners uh, making some tremendous moves. Oil uh, made a nice move. The energy names, nice move up. What was very interesting about Friday's action, even though it was interpreted that 
that jobs number meant the Fed is on the sidelines and unable to raise interest rates, the dollar should have weakened off of that news, and it didn't. It strengthened. And, you know, look, we are coming up into some potential resistance at this trend line here with the, with the UUP. But if we wind up breaking this trend line and the strength of the dollar continues, that will likely not be good for the markets. Won't be good for the markets, won't be good for gold, and it won't be good for oil. So pay close attention to the dollar. I've been pounding the table on that uh, now for a few weeks, and I, I think it's something that you really want to pay, pay close attention to next week. So let's talk about the other big thing that could potentially happen next week. What do we have? What sector is coming up with uh, earnings? Retail. Now, I will say this about the retail. We had a little bit of bounce on, on Friday, okay? We actually wound up closing below the 100-day moving average. Uh, we're below the 200-day moving average and all the other moving averages, but had a little bounce on Friday. Now, this is what could happen. The sentiment for the retail sector is so bad that if there's any glimpse of it's not as bad as we thought, you may get a bounce in the retail sector. The likelihood of that happening, though, I think is pretty slim. And here's why. We've been looking at gas prices, which have been rising as oil has been rising, right? So if retail sales weren't strong when we had gas prices at extremely low prices, if retail sales weren't strong there, then why would we expect that they would be strong now? I don't know. That's just something that uh, I'm I'm thinking about here. So anyway, retail, we've broken below the long-term dominant trend. And this is the second break, right? So here's the long-term dominant trend. We broke below here back when we had the sell-off December, January, February. We recovered. We came up into this trend line. And now we have failed and broken back below that long-term dominant trend. And that is concerning, okay? If retail numbers are bad, then we're going to see some real pain, I think, in the XRT. Let's go to the IBB. Now listen, I don't like being, I'm a positive guy. I like to, I'm an optimist, okay? I like to find the good in things. But, and I'm not trying to be overly pessimistic. I'm just trying to decipher what's happening out there and what, what things we're seeing and that could impact the near-term -term direction of the market. So, and they're just not looking real positive to me. So let's look at the IBB. So what we were hoping for, you know, back when we broke over here, broke over this key level of resistance, right? A little flat top breakout type thing going on, you know, whatever, maybe a W pattern, whatever you want to call it. Had a nice little thing go on. We broke out and then we came up into resistance at 289. And, and what we were saying is we wanted to see this consolidate, build up some pressure, and then take out this 289, maybe go up, test 300, take out this long-term trend line, right? And maybe the IBB takes a, a, a nice swift move higher because it was a beaten down sector and maybe there is some value there. Problem is we got earnings from some of the big boys within the sector and they didn't help our cause. They actually hurt us. And instead of breaking to the upside, we wound up breaking to the downside. Now, the sector is under so much pressure. There's so much negative negativity out there and if you look at the slope of the longer term moving averages, the 100 day, the 200 day EMA simple, it doesn't matter. They're all sloping down. This is a sector that is in a lot of pain and likely is going to continue being in pain. Uh, look at what happened with uh, ENDP, right? Reported earnings worse than expected, lowered guidance, huge gap down. Uh, you know, thing got crushed on Friday. Look at MNK, right? Breaking down. Let's look at VRX. 
And Monday, I think it is, we get a report from Teva, which already has broken down in anticipation of its earnings report. Could we get a bounce in the sector? Absolutely. Could you get some kind of a quick snapback day trade? Absolutely. But I would not be delving into this sector, you know, buying swings at this particular point in time. So uh, Teva and then HZNP is another one. Uh, oops, let me pull that up again. HZNP reports on Monday or Tuesday, I think, as well. So, and it's coming up to a very critical area of potential support. If it breaks below, it could get pretty ugly in HZNP. So uh, I recommend being very cautious if you're looking to get involved in the biotech space. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which actually started, was the index that started this decline uh, and has started to bring the other markets back with it. So interesting move in the NASDAQ on Friday, had a little bit of a bounce. Um, and really you can attribute it to uh, just a few companies, right? Facebook had a nice little bounce. Uh, if Facebook can take out 120, uh, you could see Facebook continue to move higher. Uh, it may go up and test there and fail, right? But uh, Facebook, I mean, look, they had great earnings, uh, but it also has this gap to fill on the daily. And it wouldn't be a huge shocker if the market rolls over if it was to fill, come back and fill that gap. It did it back here, right? It had this big gap, and look what it did. It wanted to come back and fill it. Wouldn't be a big shocker if we filled the gap on Facebook. Uh, Google had a little pop, right? So actually, so what moved on Friday were some of the the Fang stocks, right? Google had a little bounce. It pulled has basically bounced right off the 200-day moving average, right? Could it come up and fill the gap on this daily? It absolutely could. Uh, let's take a look at Netflix, which had a little bounce. I mean, it had a little bounce, but it's not a pretty chart um, at all. Right, I mean, it's got this gap. It could potentially go up, I guess, and fill, but um, it's at a, it bounced off a, a pretty uh, logical area of potential support. If it breaks down below 88, it could get ugly quickly. Uh, you know, we've got Disney reporting next week, which uh, could be good for the markets if it, they come in with a strong, solid report. I mean, they're having all kinds of great, tremendous numbers from the movies uh, that they've been releasing. So. Uh, maybe we get a good report out of Disney, but uh, Amazon also had a, a nice little bounce on on Friday, uh, even though it was announced that Jeff Bezos sold it, his largest position ever uh, that he's ever sold in Amazon. It was a whopping 1% of interest of his ownership in Amazon, uh, <laughs> which only equated like $641 million. I mean, it was not, it was just no big deal. But, uh, you know, another one that has a gap to fill on the daily and uh, could potentially do that if the market does roll over. So NASDAQ had a little bit of a bounce, but it's still uh, facing some pressure of this trend line. If it can take that trend line out, it has a lot of moving averages that it then has to reclaim. So it does have some pressure over above. Now, look, we don't have to have a dramatic drop in the market. We could just grind sideways we could just you know continue to chop sideways and create a very frustrating market for everyone bulls and 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 bears alike uh so that's something also to consider so let's take a look at uh cyber security big disappointment i actually took a uh a little lotto play in uh fire eye before their earnings, and that turned out to be a really crappy lottery ticket. Uh, it was a really small position. I lost 150 bucks in the trade. Uh, <laughs> so it was a really crappy lotto, but I, I thought maybe we would get, I, part of the reason was, I, you know, I thought Hack and Cyber were actually holding up fairly well. Uh, so, you know, FireEye looked fairly attractive, and then they wound up missing, and so anyway, we had a gap down in, in cyber. We had a gap down in hack. Uh, those two sectors, I thought maybe we're looking uh, as, as potential breakout uh, areas, and it just didn't work out in, for, for, uh, for that sector. So seeing some weakness there. 
Let's take a look at the IWM, right? So the IWM is at an area of potential support. See if this area holds. It did have a little bounce on Friday. You know that I've been, you know, I follow that T2108 and T2107. Uh, you know, we got up and that's the percentage of stocks over the 40 day uh, moving average. And, you know, we were up in the nosebleed area. I kept saying we we're in the nosebleed area. If you got profits, it's a place to do it. Lock them in, you know, reduce your exposure. And, you know, we finally, after consolidating for quite a bit of time up over 70, which is considered, you know, to be overbought, overdone, need, need to get a pullback. We consolidated, consolidated, and eventually have broken lower. So, uh, you know, it look, and look, that thing can get down into the teens. It can get down into the single digits. So something to be careful or cautious of. The percentage of stocks over a 200-day moving average also pulling back, okay? So that does indicate to me that we need to be a bit cautious. So uh, let's take a look at energy. So actually what I want to do is I want to take a look at, um, well, let's just take a look at it. So the USO, I mean, it, you know, look, 11.39 is an area of resistance. And uh, let's take a look at the XLE. So we've had a tremendous run in the energy names. We came up into resistance. We pulled back. Now we're at an area of potential support. Could we find support here and then bounce and, and make a move higher? That is absolutely possible. You know, one of the reasons why we had uh, a little bit of a bounce in or, or oil help held up this week was because of the big fire up in Alberta and, you know, some fighting in Libya. And when you actually look at the numbers of what the, an impact that is for either Canada or Libya, it's nothing. I mean, in terms of supply, it's absolutely nothing. It's minuscule. Uh, so... If oil does roll over next week, uh, I think you're going to see energy uh, names pull back. And I think that will create uh, some difficulty for the markets to move higher. Uh, and if especially if the dollar continues to rise. So that is this is an area. I mean, we're at a pretty interesting area here. If we break down, could we come back and test this trend line right here? We could. Uh, I think. Oil is an area that you need to be uh, cautious in, oil and energy. Uh, financials, you know, basically broke this trend line here. We did pull, we did have a little bounce on Friday. Uh, coming up into this trend line, we'll see if this acts as resistance and we continue to move lower. Industrials have pulled back a bit, right? Testing the trend line. We'll see if we can break through or if we continue the new trend lower. Transportation. Let's take a look at the IYT. Transportation also looking as though it potentially wants to pull back and test the long-term dominant trend. Right here we are here. That's the long-term dominant trend. Came up into some resistance, pulling back. Wouldn't be a big shocker if we came back here and tested this, right? <clears throat> now, let's take a, talk about uh, gold. I mean, uh, last week I talked about if you're buying JNUG at 178, you're, you know, buying it. You, you, you know, you're, you're doing a fear of missing out trade, right? And... Look at what it did in three days. It went from 180. It had a little pop up to 184 and wound up pulling back to 128. Now we did see a little bounce after the news uh, on Friday, right? Even though the dollar was up and there was some strength in the dollar, JNUG had a nice little bounce. Now the question is, is this going to suck some people in to an overbought situation where they get hurt? I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But I really still think... You know, look, for day trading action, short-term action, this is the place to be, right? Uh, the miners and, and precious metals, there is some definitely some volatility in the space. You can get some big moves and nugget, JNUG, 
Uh, it's definitely a space to watch for quick, you know, scalp opportunities. Uh, but don't be taking any of this stuff up here for long-term holds or swings, right? I think you're, you're, if you were to do that, you're exposing yourself to some significant risk. So be careful uh, with the gold and miners. I also just read an article that, uh, you know, silver, there, there's a the largest silver short position in quite some time. Uh, I just read an article on that. So I would be careful within the space, okay? Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Volatility, look, there's still a tremendous amount of complacency out there. So, you know, unless if we do see a break of some of those critical areas of support, then you're likely going to see a spike in volatility. If the market decides to squeeze, you know, volatility is going lower. So you're just going to have to be uh, really aware of what is going on. The safest space that I can find out there is, oh, well, we're going to talk about that IYR in a minute. Uh, aerospace and defense. Even though I did see Northrop Grumman, somebody on the inside uh, sold some shares there. And who was the other one? Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman. Oh, and Boeing, who also reports next week. Uh, some insider selling going on there. So I found that a little bit interesting. But, you know, an area of safety, if the markets really do roll over, you know, the defense sector, it could be an area that you would look to park some money. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't pull back. They probably will. Uh, however, they pay a decent dividend and they probably won't pull back as much as the rest of the market. But let's so, you know, uh, I did see this on Fast Money, or not Fast Money, Options Action, Carter, Carter Worth, uh, IYR. The funny thing about that, I saw this before I actually saw uh, Carter Worth talking about it. I thought, wow, look at how this thing broke out. Pretty hot looking chart. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, this thing continues. I, I found this action interesting. In this IYR, maybe it comes up and tests 82.25 in that area where it would likely meet some potentially significant resistance uh, up in that 82 area. But I have to admit, that is kind of a hot-looking little little breakout right there. So IYR may be something that you would want to uh, keep an eye on next week. Let's see what else. Oh, tan. So, you know, tan didn't work out either, right? So we were hoping this could have been another beatdown sector that after we got the Sun Edison thing out of the way, the bankruptcy, uh, maybe we would see a bounce in the solars and it actually didn't work out, right? We came up into this longer term trend line, came up into the 100 day moving average and wound up failing. And it looks as though it could potentially go lower. So I would be careful uh, in the solar space. Doesn't mean we can't get some little snapback bounces, but I would be careful in that space. Home builders, uh, seeing uh, some weakness in the home builders. And also the financials, right? Had a little bounce on, on Friday. We'll see if it can take out this little trend line, a little resistance, or if... Uh, we get a continued move lower. And then XLU was interesting as well. Uh, even with the Fed supposed, you know, going to be on the sidelines, you would have thought XLU, the utilities would have done well, and it actually didn't. It kind of, you know, bounced around a little bit, but it actually closed red on the day, which was somewhat interesting. So listen, bottom line is I remain skeptical of the markets. I remain skeptical of the economy. I think that uh, there are more things leaning in the favor of the bears than there are the bulls, but that doesn't mean that we can't get squeezed because of the fact that there is a lot of sentiment that is leaning towards the bearish side. Um, so that could, you know, create a, a big squeeze. Um, I think we need to pay close attention to the dollar. We need to pay close attention to oil next week and see how uh, these earnings plays come in. But, you know, this is a time that I think you want to be pretty cautious, uh, keep your position sizing reasonable, 
All right, don't be trying to hit home runs or play breakouts uh, in this type of, of market, right? Right now, we're, we're kind of trendless. If we break below uh, 2040 in the S&P 500, uh, if we take out, you know, some, some meaningful levels of support, then all of a sudden we could see a, a new trend developing and it could be pretty bearish. So uh, be careful out there. I'm sorry I couldn't get the, uh, I didn't do the uh, stocks to watch live session. Like I said, I'll try and get a, uh, maybe a pre-recorded stocks to watch video out sometime this weekend, but I do have my hands full. So be careful out there trading next week. Look, don't go in with any preconceived notion of what the markets are going to do because they can surprise you, right? Regardless of what, what things may be telling you, what it looks like, what it, it, look, the markets have a tendency to do the opposite of what you think. So don't overcommit to any thesis until you get confirmation. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you all next week.